So welcome to Bhakti Sangha Japa Conference Call. Today we are very fortunate to have His Holiness Chandra Mali Swami Maharaj. So... I'm with you, don't Hare, worry. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept our humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada, all glory to Guru Maharaj. So, thank you so much, Maharaj, for giving your valuable association and time. So, we are very fortunate to have you on the call. So, I would like to hand over the call to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Hare Bo, uh, can someone, uh, one of the devotees there who is a very good reader, can someone read the translation and report? We have uh, someone who can read. Hare Krishna Prabhu, I can read uh, if you want. It's Gautam Vandas. They have to read slowly and clearly. Sure, Prabhu. So, uh, the translation, Prabhu? Uh, you can start with the set script if you can do it. Yeah, sure. 4.29.56 Rajo Vacha Shrutam Anvikshtam Brahman Bhagwan Yat Abhasata Neta Jajnananti Upadhaya Kimna Bruyur Vidhur Yadi Word for word? No, translation. Okay. Translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Prabhupada, Shravapad Ki Jai. The king replied, My dear Brahmana, whatever you have said, I have heard with great attention, and considering all of that, have come to the conclusion that the Acharyas, teachers who engaged me in fruit activity did not know this confidential knowledge. If you were aware of it, why would they not explain it to me? Report? Oh, purport. Yes. Actually, the so-called teachers or leaders of material society do not really know the goal of life. They are des described in Bhagavad Gita as Maya, Maya Partha Janaha. They appear to be very learned scholars, but actually the influence of the illusionary energy has taken away the knowledge. Real knowledge means searching out Krishna, searching out Krishna, Veda is just sarve aham, eva veda ya. All the Vedic knowledge is meant for searching out Krishna because Krishna is the origin of everything, janmadi, asya, yata. In Bhagavad Gita 10.2, Krishna says, aham adir hi deva nam. I am the source of the demigods. Thus, Krishna is the origin and beginning of all demigods, including Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and all others. The Vedic ritualistic ceremonies are concerned with satisfying dem different demigods, but unless one is very advanced, he cannot understand that the original personality of, of is Sri Krishna, Govindam Adi Purusham, Tamaham Bajami. After hearing the instructions of Narad, King Bahishman, King Bahishman came to his senses. The real goal of life is to attain devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The king therefore decided to reject the so-called priestly order that simply engage the followers in the ritualistic ceremonies without giving effective instructions about the goal of life. At the present moment, the churches, temples, and mosques all over the world were not are not attracting people because foolish priests can, cannot elevate other followers to the platform of knowledge. Not being aware of the real goal of life, they simply keep their followers in the sorry, simply keep congregations in ignorance. Consequently, the who those who are well educated have been uninterested in the ritual ritualistic ceremonies that go under the garb of so many religions. The Goswamis from the very beginning differ, differ, no, differed you, from... Whoa, 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 you skipped a whole section there. Oh, sorry. Uh, actually, uh, sorry, the uh, screen was mo moving. Uh, not being, uh, consequently, those who are well-educated... Go ahead. Yes, yes, sorry. 
consequently those who are well educated they have become uninterested in the ritualistic ceremonies at the same time they are not benefited with real knowledge this krishna consciousness movement is therefore very important for the enlightened enlightenment of all classes following the footsteps of maharaj varishman everyone should take advantage of this krishna consciousness movement and abandon the stereotyped ritualistic ceremonies that go under the garb of so many religions the goswamis from the very beginning differed from the priestly class that was engaged in ritualistic ceremonies indeed shri sanatan goswami compiled his hari bhakti vilas for the guidance of the vaishnavas the vaishnavas not caring not caring for the lifeless activities of the priestly classes take the full krishna consciousness take to full krishna consciousness and become perfect in this very life that is described in the previous verse as parmahamsa sharanam taking shelter of the parmahamsa the liberated soul and becoming successful in this life hari krishna thank you hari krishna om gyan timirandasya kena jana salakaya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha Shri Chaitanya Manovistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namhe Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvise Sasunyavari Asyatya Rai Sitarine Vanchakalpa Tarubhis Cha Kripa Sindhu Pae Vacha Vatitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shavasani Gaur Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <clears throat> Now, the conclusion of the discussion between Sri Narada Muni and King Barhisman has reached. Um, the king has finally become enlightened that what Narada was telling him is the best thing that he needed to hear because prior to that, he was misled in the real goal of life. Uh, Krishna explains in the uh, in the Bhagavad Gita in the fourth chapter, one should not be enamored by the flowery words of the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies. <laughs> uh, throughout the Vedas, there are so many ritualistic ceremonies. Uh, Krishna also instructs Arjuna in the second chapter. He says, "Trayguna Visaya Veda, Nistrayguna Bhavarjuna, Nirdandva Nitisatpasto, Niryoga Shema Atvavan." The Vedas deal mainly with the three modes of material nature. Rise above these modes, become transcendental, become free, become free from all dualities and anxieties for safety and gain, and be established. within the self so the majority and this is the large majority in vedic knowledge or vedic scriptures <clears throat> talks about hymns prayers and various types of elevations through ritualistic ceremonies through various types of pujas through that various types of austerities meditations penances following vows chanting mantras <clears throat> the vedas are vast and especially the sama veda so many hymns you know, the rig veda so many rules and regulations for austerities and practices <clears throat> so um but he, the essence of the veda krishna says in the bhagavad gita Vedaischasafam aham eva vedyo vedanta krit veda vedeva chakacham. He says, and this is a very important verse, 1515 from the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, that I am the compiler of the Vedas. 
I am the, the knower of the Vedas also, and the Vedas are meant to know me. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the, by all the Vedas, I am to be known. Indeed, I am the compiler of the Vedas, and I am the knower of the Vedas. In other words, uh, Vedic knowledge is meant to bring one to Krishna consciousness. If it doesn't, then it hasn't reached its uh, perfection. In other words, there are so many living entities who are interested in elevation to better material situations. And therefore, there are so many different types of priests, brahmanas, smarta brahmanas, ritualistic tantric priests, various types of persons who make money from their so-called followers in order to elevate them to a better material situation. But Prabhupada says we can see that people have become discouraged, especially in Western countries, with this uh, ritualistic type of ceremonial practice because it has no substance in it. <clears throat> if, you're, if you're in a position where um, you're in a dangerous position, say you're on a boat and the boat is uh, rocking along on the waves and it looks quite dangerous what's happening. If you just shift yourself to a better, different position on the boat, that's not going to change your destination. And this is what all these uh, ceremonies are meant. Well, they also have a purpose. What is their purpose? In, in order to bring one to the platform where they can, people can recognize the real goal of life. Because if people are too degraded, too sinful, or too materialistic, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. And uh, let's see, what is that verse? Oh, uh, I think it's yeah, 244. Bring up that verse 244 in Bhagavad Gita. Bogaisvaya prashaktanam taya prahita chaita samgavya sapmika budir samadana habidyati. In the minds of those who are too attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence and who are bewildered by such things, the resolute determination for devotional service to the Supreme Lord does not take place. So there are so therefore in order to show mercy to people in general, uh, there are other ceremonies for elevation from a lower grade to a little bit of a higher grade. That's all. But we don't need that anymore because we have Lord Chaitanya's process, which is a direct process. Krishna Varnam Twasa Krishna Sangal Panga Swaparshadam. Yadyai Sankirtanai Prayai Yajantihi Sumedasaha. But those who have Sumedasa, it's interesting, the word Medasa means intelligence, and Su means great. Uh, not like Alpha Medasa. Alpha means me meager intelligence. Prabhupada would use the term those whose brains are filled up with cow dung. They can't think. But good intelligence, they understand that they should take to the chanting of the holy names of the Lord and worship the, the performer of the holy name of the Lord who has brought the one who sings and chants the holy names of the Lord. He is Krishna himself and he's come in this age with his associate service weapons and confidential companions. This verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam in the 11th canto is our focus in Krishna consciousness. So there is, there is no need to perform any types of ritualistic ceremonies. All, we ha all one has to do is develop the attachment for association with devotees and chanting the holy names of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 
Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. When people in general, we have many incidents that people somehow rather come in contact with our movement through the Sankirtan movement. And immediately they become very uh, inspired and blissful. There was one incident where this was a Rathiatra ceremony in London many years ago, and our devotees were out performing the kirtan and with Lord Jagannath and moving along the road. And devotees were chanting very exuberantly, dancing, singing. Uh, one spectator, a very well distinguished lady, quite a respectable looking lady. Uh, she came from the sides and went right to the person who was singing. And she was in utter tears. She was just crying, crying, crying. And then she, she said, what are you singing? I can't stop crying. I don't know what that is. What is it? And she just wanted to hear more about this chanting that was had somehow penetrated her heart and mind and brought her to the point of you know deep deep emotion so this chanting of the holy names of the lord is the means in this age for self-realization there's no second process that's required of course we perform other activities, such as we maintain our families, that's need needed. Uh, we read Srimad Bhagavatam, so we can get a clear understanding of our relationship with Krishna and also understand Krishna more and deeper. And we, uh, we always take Krishna prasadam, not food that is not offered to the Lord, and only that food that is cooked nicely with a desire to, to be, to please the Lord with the offering. And, uh, and for those of us who live at home, worshiping of the deity is a, re, is a highly recommended thing. Because the deity, especially Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, they're recommended as the Istadeva in this age, because by worshiping Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda in their deity form, then we can perform Sankirtan very nicely. And that's all that's required to worship the Lord in his form as Gornitai, is just to come together as family members and friends and chant the holy names of the Lord. <laughs> so this is the, the process. Um, King Barhisman is kind of astounded and at the same time unfelt feeling cheated that all these years he was thinking he was doing some very important religious ceremonies, but now he realized after hearing from the pure devotee. And this is what the, the uh, purport concludes with. It says that we have to hear the truth from those who know the truth. If we don't hear from those who know it, it won't really go into our hearts and minds and many times we won't be able to seriously take up the process. So taking shelter of Krishna's representative, the pure devotee spiritual master, and regularly, it's not that, well, I have a spiritual master, he's somewhere in the world, and uh, I write him like once a year, just to let him know I'm still around. No, you, you should be regularly hearing from your spiritual master daily about from his lectures or from his books or whatever way he disseminates transcendental knowledge to keep our consciousness fixed. Because in this age of Kali, there are so many distractions. This is a very difficult age and we're where I think we're starting to understand the difficulties of Kali Yuga, but our present situation that we are in now, where practically people's civil liberties have been destroyed, 
many places around the world. And it's only going to get worse. But nothing can stop the Sankirtan movement. The Sankirtan movement is transcendental to everything material. Kali Yuga Pavana, Kali Boyanasana, Sri Satyanandana Nam Ray. That Lord Chaitanya has come with the medicine in this age and he's chasing away the dog of Kali with the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. And therefore, Kali can never, can, cannot stay anywhere near Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So as long as we take shelter of Krishna and his holy name, to inspire our family members to do everything, every, the, the same thing, we will always be in the best position to make spiritual progress. And then it'll become easy to understand and uh, to uh, relate to uh, the Lord in devotional service. Everything centers around the chanting of the Holy Name, but we have to be serious about this chanting. It shouldn't be some lip service that we just perform every day, uh, 27,640 names and then we're finished, no. We should be chanting each and every name clearly with attention, with the desire to offer our bhakti to Krishna in the form of his name. And this is, this is a simple process. It's a simple process. And uh, it's, but because of Mahaprabhu is Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namari Govind Shristena Maha. He's the most magnanimous, merciful manifestation of the Godhead. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu only appears once in every 1,000 Kali Yugas. So to have his association and to be able to chant the holy names of the Lord is such a rare opportunity. When Krishna comes and Sri Krishna and Vrindavan, then right after that Mahaprabhu comes and that's once in 8,640,000,000 8, years. Now, let me see, okay. You know, it's actually, uh, yeah, 320 million years, 640 million years. So, yeah, 640 million years before Lord Chaitanya and Lord Krishna actually appear. So, in this Kali Yuga, they have come. And Kali and Lord Chaitanya is very powerful. He's Krishna himself, and he's very merciful, and he's giving the holy name to anyone and everyone who sincerely uh, chants his holy name and associates with the devotees of the Lord. So this is our process. Um, we, many of us, because of our birth, in the land of India, we're so much used to ritualistic ceremonies. Some of them we're very much attached to, but we actually see that, uh, that a lot of them, they don't really give you any real benefit. It's like the ceremony itself is the benefit. <laughs> in other words, the results are for devotees, we're not interested in so many ritualistic ceremonies. We might do some like Agni Homas for initiation ceremonies. We do Vivaha, uh, some scar for weddings, like that. <laughs> These things are, you know, things that we still perform like that. But they're not meant to really elevate our consciousness spiritually. They're just needed to so we can stay within the house of Veda and perform the activities that on the materialistic level according to the, according to the guidance of the Shastras. Otherwise, uh, all we need is chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And there is that story with um, 
Lord Shiva and Sanatana Goswami. <laughs> Sanatana Goswami was staying in one mountain near Vrindavan called, uh, let's see, what's the name of that place? I can't remember the name of that mountain, but Lord, Shri, uh, Lord Sanatana Goswami was doing meditation on this mountain. And um, there was one devotee who was a devotee of Lord Shiva. Now, he had been worshipping Shiva and successfully, and then he came to Shiva and Shiva appeared to him and Shiva said, well, what do you want? Dwarasaditya Teal, that's the name of the mountain, Dwarasaditya Teal. Um, and then uh, she, he said, well, I want to be rich. I want to have so much wealth. Please give me an immense amount of wealth. He said, uh, Shiva said, you know, there's this sadhu, his name is... Um, um, Sanatana Goswami, he's in, he's in Dwarasaditya Teal. You go here and there, and he has a touchstone. And you ask him for his touchstone, because there is such a stone, and you can't find it anymore, but you touch it to anything, anything metal, and that metal becomes gold. So he goes with great enthusiasm to meet Sanatana Goswami, offers his obeisance, recognizing this great sage. And he said, I heard you have a touchstone. Uh, and Sanatana Goswami said, yes. And he said, I want it. <laughs> and Sanatana Goswami said, all right, well, actually it's over there. Go look in that, that garbage pile over there. I think I threw it over there. So uh, he's really enthusiastic. He goes to the garbage pile. He finds the touchstone. And now he's so happy. He's got it. He's touching it to so many different kinds of metal, and it's all becoming gold. And after some time, he's starting to think, well, this Sanatan Goswami, he's not a, a fool. Why would he keep a touchstone in the garbage? He must have something more valuable than this touchstone. I'm going to ask him for that. So he can, he goes back, falls at the feet of Sanatana Goswami, offers nice prayers, begs. He says, I can understand because the fact that you had thrown that touchstone in the garbage, you have something even more valuable. Sanatana Goswami said, yes, I do. <laughs> and he said, well, I want that. Sanatana Goswami said, all right, but first take, away, take, take your touchstone and throw it away. <laughs> throw my touchstone away. He said, if you want this, this is what is required. So reluctantly, but having faith in Sanatana, he takes the touchstone and throws it into the river. And then Sanatana Goswami says, now I will give you the most valuable of all gifts. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So that story is mentioned throughout the scriptures. <clears throat> that this is the most valuable of all gifts. Because it's not only the wealth of bhakti, but it's 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 the complete wealth of everything that is in existence. Everything is there because Krishna's name is Krishna. And one who chants in that mood, knowing that Krishna's name is Krishna, with a desire to take shelter of Krishna in devotion, then Krishna will be will reveal the name according to the devotion of the devotee. So we have a, a great gift of the holy name of the Lord. And time is short. We, didn't, we don't have to spend so much time on so many ritualistic ceremonies. Maybe a couple, one or two is necessary. 
like that. But otherwise, you spend time chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We have the story of Srila uh, Haridas Thakur. When Srila uh, Haridas Thakur was being the target of envy by one magistrate, Ramachandra Khan, who was envious of uh, Haridas Thakur's popularity as being a great saint. So he wanted to destroy him. So he gathered all the prostitutes in the area and found the most, what we say, uh, what's her name? Her name was Hiralakshi. Uh, she was the best of all the prostitutes. And so she agreed to go and try to make Haridas fall down. So Haridas was staying at a little hut nearby. And so she came just at the beginning of evening offered her obeisances to the Tulsi plant, went in. Haridas was there, was chanting. He was just chanting, chanting, chanting. She started to make her proposition. Oh, you're such a beautiful young man and I am such a qualified lady. I think our, our union together is meant to be. In so many words, she was enticed, trying to entice him. He, she said, Haridas said, uh, yes. What you say is true, but I have made a vow that I have to chant my uh, number of rounds per month, and I'm falling a little behind. So if you sit here, I will try to finish this evening, and then I will satisfy your desire. So she's sitting there and sitting there, and he's chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So finally, it's like midnight, and he's still chanting. He turns to her, realizing that, you know, she's been waiting. So he said, I'm sorry, but I wasn't able to finish my vow. Come back tomorrow, and I'll satisfy your desire. So to make the, the whole story short, she comes back the next night, and then he asks her to wait again. After two nights, she leaves. The third night, she comes back. And then he promises, I'm sure I will finish tonight. But this time, while she's sitting there waiting, she's also listening to the holy name. And after three nights of listening to the holy name, her, her, her mind and her heart actually started to change. And she fell at the feet of Haridas, begged his forgiveness, and then she kind of understood you are actually a great saint. This Ramachandra Khan, he petitioned me to try to make you fall down. Um, and Harida said, I was about to leave this place when I heard you were coming, but then when I was about to leave this place when I heard that uh, Ramachandra was trying to attack me, but I heard that you were coming, so I decided to stay just to deliver you. And therefore, Haridas, he sat and chanted, and then later, actually, she wanted to become a devotee. So Haridas, of course, said, actually, then she was wealthy. She was the top prostitute in the, in the whole province. He said, you go home, you distribute all your wealth to the brahmanas, and you come back here, you put on white cloth, and you chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So she did that, and it's mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that she actually also chanted uh, 333,333 names of the whole of Krishna. She actually became a great saint, and she worshiped Tulsi her whole life. So, uh, yeah, this is the power of the holy name. And anybody who submissively opens their hearts to the hearing and the sound of the holy name of the Lord will become purified very fast. Okay. So, before we take questions, I'm going to have to take a
two, not two, but one minute break. I just need to do something and I'll be right back. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare 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 Krishna, 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 and uh, for enlightening us about the power of the holy name. So thank you, Maharaj. It was so wonderful to hear because we chant every day. But when we hear about the uh, glorification about the holy name and we hear about what is the power of the holy name, so it uh, gives us the uh, strength or the enthusiasm to chant beautifully. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Maharaj. So now I will request devotees if they have any questions or they want to share their realizations, they can go ahead. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for your wonderful question. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. turn up your volume a little. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this better, Maharaj? No, it's still quite. Yeah. There you go, I think. Speak again. Hindu Mataji. We cannot okay. hear you. I can hear you now. Sorry, Mataji just went to get your earphones. Uh, Maharaj, I, I have a question. So you were saying we don't need to follow all the uh, samskaras that are there. Uh, but we also hear that they are, you know, purificatory processes for us on a regular basis. So where does uh, family deities or family temples uh, fall, Maharaj? Because uh, back in India, I, I think a lot of families do have their own temples. And it may not be worship of Krishna, Lord Krishna. So do we continue worshipping them or not? Um, the question comes to, what's the uh, question? Uh, so Maharaj, the question is, uh, we have family temples. So do we continue worshipping those family deities? I mean, uh, like, I'm from South India. And over yeah. there, I have a, like, Devi temple, a goddess temple. So uh, so do we continue worshipping them? And Well, what mm, Devi, Devi worships, <laughs> she worships Shiva. <laughs> and Shiva worships Krishna. If you worship in the topmost, you don't have to worship. Yeah. And Krishna says that actually those who worship the demigods, the, the demigods get all their power from me. So Krishna in many places says the exclusive worship upon him concludes worship of all the devas. And even the shaktis, everything. We are somewhat stuck in tradition, but it's not really necessary because uh, we know from example, uh, I'll give you an example. What was that one story where um, um, the brother of, um, what was his name? Uh, Ramachandra Kaviraj. His brother's name was Govinda Kaviraj. 
Govinda Kaviraj wrote that song, Raja Hurey Mana Shri Nanda Nandana Abhaya Charana Bindu Ray. So Govinda Kaviraj, before he was a devotee of Krishna, he was a devotee of Shakta, of Durga. So uh, his brother came in contact with Naratam Das Thakur and became a great devotee of Krishna. And now, but he was still worshiping uh, Shakta or Durga Devi. So one night he had a dream where Durga Devi appeared in his mind and says, you know, that actually Krishna is my master. So if you're worshiping Krishna, you're also worshiping me. <laughs> you don't have to worship. In other words, she pretty much told him he's wasting his time worshiping her, that actually I worship Krishna. <laughs> we all worship Krishna. So, uh, and then of course he gave up his worship of Durga Devi and then became a devotee of Krishna. And he wrote that beautiful bhajan, bhaja Raymana Rishina Dhananda. And he laments all those years that he wasted his time in other forms of worship. Yes, yeah, so, we honor the devas. Uh, we should not disrespect the devas. It says if you disrespect the devas, that's an offense because they're empowered uh, entities that have a service to the Lord in this material world. Chandi, Durga, uh, Ganesh, so many, there's so many devas that we can we honor but we don't engage in formal worship that's all our formal worship is all dedicated to krishna and they are pleased when you worship there is the deva they are devotees of the lord of the supreme lord just like ganesh it says that ganesh carries a tumuli uh, on his uh, tusk, the tumuli is his tusk. He carries the lotus feet of Lord Nishringadeva on his tusk. So Ganesh is wor worships Lord, Sh Lord uh, Nishringadeva. And by the power of Lord Nishringadeva, he removes obstacles in devotional service. So I remember it was Bhakti Chiru Maharaj who was saying one time, we don't really need to engage in formal worship of Ganesh, although it mentions worship of Ganesh in the nectar devotion. But if we worship Lord Nisringadev, it's, it's perfect. <laughs> but we honor the devas. We don't disrespect them. Like I have my little murti uh, on my altar of Ganesh. I have a little kind of like a uh, porcelain deity of Ganesh that sits on my altar. He sits on the very top because uh, he is a great devotee of the Lord. And we respect him and honor him, but formal worship is meant for Krishna. That's why in that uh, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, in the very last verse, um, in the sixth chapter, he says, what is that verse? 647. Um, what is that? 647. Yoginam mapisarvesham madgatendra atmanam stradavam bhajate yo man seme yuktatamo mataha. Of all yogis, the one with, with great fire who always abides in me, thinks of me within himself and renders transcendental. Loving service to me is the most intimately united with me in yoga is the highest of all. Krishna says that is my opinion. After describing all the different yogas and all the different goals of the yogas, and then in the purport, the word bhajate is mentioned that worship is meant for the Supreme Lord. Like that. One can avoid worshiping a respective man or a demigod and may be discourteous, but one can avoid 
cannot avoid serving the Supreme Lord without being thoroughly condemned. So, yeah. So, worship means to adore, to show respect, to show honor. This is a very long purport. But Prabhupada uses the word bhajate, means that our worship is meant for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whether he comes in the form of Ramachandra or Lord Chaitanya or Lord Sri Krishna, like that. Any of the, what we say, supreme manifestations of the Godhead are worshipful. But we don't disrespect or dishonor the devas like that. Thank you so much, Maharaj. And thank you for the wonderful class. Krishna. I hope that helps. Mm -hmm. Yes, Maharaj. Anyone else? Hare Krishna Maharaj Dandavat Pranam or Ghosh Trishla Prabhupada. Maharaj, like we, as you mentioned, like chanting and deity worship at home, both are important. But uh, we often hear the importance of a uh, holy name much more than deity worship. So while doing deity worship, we we can barely manage to, I mean, along with other work at, at home, we can barely manage to do 16 rounds. So and we, in, in the classes, we hear that we should increase our rounds. How do we manage between that? Where is the line between deity worship? And how much is fine with deity worship? And how, what is the too much? And how to understand that? Where are we going? Uh, how to understand what is too much? There's no such thing as too much. But you have to balance your schedule where you can put quality into whatever you're doing. Not that you rush through everything. It's because you have a lot to do. Better to do things less and nicely, nicely than to try to do a lot and just rush it through just for the sake of having... Uh, a large amount of worship. Everything should be done nicely. You have, to be, you have to practice adjusting your time schedule where you can facilitate your deity worship along with your uh, chanting because both go together and they also so support each other. One is called Pancharatri Pividi, the other one is called Bhagavad Dharma. Bhagavad Dharma means hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Kacharat Vidi means worshiping the Lord in his Archivigra heart form. Prabhupada said these are like two rails on the transcendental track. You need both. So a nice balance between both is good. Especially for Brihasas who live at home, they should perform regular duty worship. For those who are sannyasis, brahmacharis who travel, who, uh, it's, they can worship the deity when they come to the temples, whenever they stop at the temples. But for the, um, for the Grihastas, keep a nice deity of Radha and Krishna if you can, and with the permission and, uh, and guidance of your spiritual master. And, or Gornitai are very favorable. So if you have one in time, you can always do kirtan and chant in front of them. Therefore, you're performing both parts of the uh, ceremony simply by worshiping one in time. Mm -hmm. So you, you need to ba you need to balance. <laughs> you have to find that balance that works for you, and just adjust, see what works. Add something, take something away, see how it, you know, play with your schedule and see how, see where you, where you can come to a satisfactory state of worship. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare uh, Krishna. But we can always chant anytime, any place, even without beads. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you.
Anyone else? Hare Krishna, um, Maharaj. This is Flavia from Atlanta. Uh, all glories to Shri Prabhupada. Please accept my uh, sincere obeisances to you. Um, I, I have a question. So I'm understanding about the deity worship and that once we are chanting to Lord Krishna, then that is all that is needed. Before I, um, I'm very new and uh, working toward being um, initiated and I have not. I've been chanting 16 rounds now, almost two full years. Uh, but before this, I would uh, chant the Mala Mantra to Lord Krishna. But before this, I would be chanting to Lakshmi and Saraswati and Ganesh, all the demigods. And uh, once I understood about Lord Krishna, I knew that he was a supreme personality of Godhead. So then I would like divide my chanting. Um, and eventually, once I started chanting 16 rounds almost two years ago, then I stopped. And for a long time, I felt guilt to my other deities. Um, and I wanted to know, was that natural or was I still stuck? Because now I don't feel stuck. I don't feel that anymore. Uh, so, and I only chant to Lord Krishna, but at occasions I will, um, um, I will sing the Narayan Kabacha or the, um, uh, that's fine. You, you can do that. So I was wondering, is that wrong? Um, um, you know, am I not supposed to sing, uh, those, those chants, like if I'm not chanting using beads, my japa bag, but I am maybe when I'm cooking or something, I may chant Ganesh or I might uh, um, chant to Narsimha Dev, you know, but as I'm going through my daily, not sitting and sitting straight and focusing how I do with um, Lord Krishna, and you know, do 16 rounds and more if if time permits, etc. So I, I just need guidance, and if you could please give me your guidance and your wisdom, I would really appreciate it. Some Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare okay, Krishna. Well, as we mentioned, that Nija Sarva Shaktis. What is that verse? Uh, let me think. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Nam Namakari Bahuda needs a Sarva Shaktis. The Tar Pita Niamita Smarane Nakalaha. The Tar the Street of a Kripa Bhagavan Mama Pidor Daiva Midrisa Mahajani Nadarada. In the name of Krishna, all the energies of the Lord are present. All the deities of the Lord are present. All the qualities of the Lord are present. All the forms of the Lord are present. All the names of the Lord are present. So this, this word, Nija Sarva Shaktis, is the, is the key. These three lines here. Your Holy Anom can render all benedictions to living beings. And it says here, in these you have invested all your transcendental energies. Nija, Sarva, all transcendental shaktis means energies. Everything is included in the name of Krishna. <clears throat> Krishna is the Sunam Bonam. Ete Cham Sam Kalam Kum Sams Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam. All the manifestations of the Godhead, plenary portions, portions of the plenary portions, every aspect of existence is found within the name of Krishna. If you want to pray to these other de deities, you can. You can pray to them, but ask them to help you to chant Krishna's name. 
they will be more happy if you worship Krishna by asking them to give them give them your blessing. That, and then if you separately make arrangements for their worship. So um, this is a culmination of describing all the manifestations of the Godhead. But everything is found in the name of Krishna. Krishna's name is Krishna. It includes all the entire spiritual world and all the manifestations of the Godhead are found within the name of Krishna. But we can pray to these other deities for their mercy. And that's fine. And you can take help from anyone, just like even from ordinary people. If some ordinary person can help you in one way, you don't start to think, well, that person's ordinary. He's, they can help. So the deities can help by giving their mercy to help you become more devoted to Krishna in the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. But all you require is the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. I, I totally understand. Would you be able to share the... Um, would you, I understand, Maharaji. Thank you very much. And could you share that, uh, that purport and the, uh, the information to where I can find that and understand that uh, more clearly? But I don't have desire to um, chant to the other deities anymore. In the beginning, yes, but now I feel very, you know, uh, fulfilled and I understand that um, by uh, calling on the name of Krishna, they are pleased. So I don't have that desire, but I would like to read more about it because I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's, uh, there's a verse in, uh, I believe in the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Verse number, let's see. There's a few verses. I'm trying to think which one is the most appropriate. Hmm. 720, let's, 721, let's go to 721. 723, I think, is the verse. Okay. Uh, 723, 723, 722, maybe that's the verse, try that one. Okay. Endowed with faith, he who endeavors to worship a particular demigod and obtains his desire, but in actuality, these benefits are bestowed by me alone. Demigods cannot award benedictions to their devotees without the permission of the Supreme Lord. Um, there's muster. This kind of shows that everything centers around the Lord. The Lord empowers the demigods to do whatever they're doing as far as universal management. But um, there is a verse, uh, I'm trying to think of that verse where simply by worshiping Krishna, everything is there. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, Devarshi Putatma Nirnim Pritting Nam. Yeah, Devarshi Putatma. Um, if you go to Bhagavad Gita, in chapter 2, verse number 39 in the purport, there's a, mm -hmm. there's a verse in that purport, which is a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Go down the page. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Keep going. Let me see if we can find it. Mm, let's see. It's not in there. It must be. 239. Uh, hmm. uh, let's see, maybe I'm missed by a verse or two. 
Mm-hmm. Anyway, look up this verse, Devarshi. There it is. There you go. There you go. Devarshi putatmanayam pratigna na kinkaranayam. What? It got away. Anyone who has completely surrendered to Krishna Mukunda, giving up all other duties, is no longer a debtor nor is obliged to anyone, not the demigods, the sages, people in general, kinsmen, nor humanity, nor forefathers. This is the indirect hint given by Krishna, and the matter will be more explained later. So here, when you come into this world, you have debts to all these deities. As soon as you worship Krishna, because he is Mukunda, he is the giver of liberation, all other deities, uh, yeah, that's the verse, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Since all classes of living are parts and part, one who has surrendered to the Lord's service has no need to serve such persons separately. Yeah, so this is the verse. So um, send that, send this uh, lady who's asking this question this verse, which is 241 in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 11241, I think it is. Thank you very much, Maharaji. I, I totally understand. I um. I've been studying with other uh, uh, Prabhuji's and uh, at the temple, and I understand that um, one that is, um, I think they use the word foolish, is uh, worshiping the demigods because they're, uh, they may react and give you what you ask for, but it's temporary. And when you uh, worship Tem- temporary. Yeah, it's yeah. temporary. And Lord Krishna, everything is in the uh, forever. Because it gives you the opportunity to learn and grow and to go back to Godhead. So I just wanted to, when people ask me, because I was brought up in a Christian society, and from um, teenage years, I was um, um, doing what they called idol worship, but I knew it was not in my heart. I knew that it was. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Maharaji. Thank you. Hey, Krishna. Okay. Thank you, devotees. Um, we do have to end now. My health is quite precarious at the point. I don't have a lot of energy to keep going. So I'll have to stop at this point. But thank you very much. Um, and I uh, hope uh, take shelter of Krishna's holy name and the association of, one, of each other and uh, stay strong. Much amidst this crazy time we are in, this is a great time for spiritual advancement. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for giving your association. Even at this stage, you are here to give your darshan and uh, your uh, live instruction. So thank you so much. We are very grateful to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much that you come here for us. So, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you, Mother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Dev. Thank you, everyone, for joining. So, thank you, Guru Maharaj. We can end here. So, Vancham, Kalpara Vishikapa, Sain Puevicha, Patika Nam Pabne, Bhu, Vaishnava, Bhu, Namu Namha, Anant Koti Vaishnava, and the Kinja, Shri La Prabhupada Kinja, Shri Mad Bhagavatam Kinja, His Holiness Chandra Mali Swami Maharaj Kinja.